Hi, I'm Nishita Balyar Singh and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Nexus Bar. Hi, I'm Nikita Balyar Singh and I'm the co-founder and COO. Since 2010-2011, uh, we've been uh, looking at companies launching their electric concept cars in uh, auto expos in Delhi and Detroit and in fact across the globe. But even then, we have not really seen them on road since then. You know, uh, in 2018, uh, we were just uh, on a late night terrace conversation where me and Nikita were discussing and just trying to realize as to why even after since 2010, we've been listening about so much of EVs and concepts and we've been looking at uh, models and designs and all of that stuff, but we still don't uh, get to see EVs seeing the day in uh, the globe. So being in uh, sustainable management courses, uh, we had this paper for uh, green and clean technology. And that is where we thought EV is something which is going to substitute the vehicles that run on exhaustible resources. But even then, it is not something that people are buying that frequently. So we really thought we need to find out what the problems are behind the acceptance of EV in India, specifically in Bhubaneswar, because that is where we belong. Uh, so we did a lot of research. We just you know sat down to casually understand why the industry is yet to see the day. And we, we did a lot of research to find out what exactly the problem is and uh, with our initial research and uh, uh, studying about EVs and uh, different companies that are offering EVs or even talking about the concepts. So we came out to a few of these uh, loopholes that we thought are major reasons as to why the EVs are not on road even as yet. And that's where uh, most of them told us that EVs take too long to charge. So it takes about 5-6 hours to charge an electric vehicle and even after such a long time of charging, it gives you hardly a few kilometer range when you have to go around. So it cannot be something that you can depend upon if you have to travel to a long distance. In fact, uh, besides the uh, range and the kind of structure the EVs offer, you could also you know, uh, correlate to the fact that there is a lack of infrastructure across the globe. So uh, in a, even if, if you don't have uh, enough charging stations, it's again a difficult space to have EVs on a daily road, on road basis. And that's also one of the reasons which is kind of creating a problem in terms of EV acceptance and you know uh, also if you look at the entire space uh, even if you have the infrastructure in place and you have all your setups and you have the best possible concepts on road if your battery takes about three and a half four hours to charge so significantly you cannot have a parity with the uh, IC engine petrol diesel uh, vehicles so considering all these facts uh, we actually further realized that the problem is not in the vehicle as a whole but in one component of that vehicle which is the battery pack so ideally, if we could look at something which was different than what is available in the market, then probably a lot of these problems that electric vehicle users were facing could have been solved with, by just replacing the battery pack in the cars. Right. Uh, the battery pack which actually is, you know, you can call it more like the heart of the car. So, uh, and in fact, uh, apart from the range, the battery pack has a number of other problems which actually relates more to the environment and uh, keeping sustainability as focus than just the range and the uh, kind of charging time. So the, these batteries actually are uh, you know, pretty toxic uh, in terms of their chemical composition and they do not really you know, degrade in the environment uh, as, as comfortably as any leaf or a flower would. Apart from that, uh, lithium is also not procured from India itself. So it is not an indigenous developed product. It has to be sourced uh, from other countries which in turn makes the battery expensive and uh, subsequently makes the vehicle expensive as well. So for a middle class uh, normal income segment person, it is difficult to afford an EV as well because the battery pack is very expensive. And uh, more so if you look at the entire life cycle of a lithium ion battery pack or uh, even any other technology that is available as of now, if you look at the life cycle, so these cells after 20 years uh, or say even after, so the EV industry kind of gives you a 7 to 8 years lifespan for the battery pack. So once that lifespan is over, these uh, cells are actually left in the environment uh, to naturally decompose, which does not happen and they really cause lot of toxicity hazards across the environment and it is very very harmful in the long run, not only to the uh, plants and animals but to human life as well. So that is where obviously we realize that uh, something has to be changed and uh, things have to be changed in the battery pack itself. But considering the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of lithium ion batteries, to present something to the market which was as effective, it was a very difficult task. So we started to think on different perspectives. We started to analyze how the living organisms function. Something that we uh, discovered randomly out of one sports event, where we realized that uh, in a human body, you consume food, then uh, it is created into energy, the energy is stored 
it is used and it is then it gets over and then you eat food again and that energy is replenished in the body so this system is very similar to how a battery pack works or uh, exactly the function that a battery pack performs in vehicles or in other electronic gadgets so if you technically look at what exactly happens and how the entire system works in a battery pack we actually uh, kind of plug it to a socket where it gains its energy which is like it is charging so technically your ions are flowing from one electrode to the other where it is charging so that if you look at the concept of human body the food that goes in technically flows the energy in your body and that's where it stores so that's exactly what happens in the battery you flow the charge it stores that energy in itself and then when you utilize it like in the human body when you utilize the energy out of the storage space it is used and then you need to replenish it again so it's a very similar concept in both the ends and that's what we realized uh, being sport and sports enthusiasts and being in that space this is what this is the first thing that stuck to us that it's a very similar concept and if if, if we could uh, kind of mimic this to build something out of natural processes and that's how things could actually be brought in a sphere which could also be biodegradable and so that is where we picked up this entire concept from and we tried to look at materials that the human body was using to store its energy and to transport that energy in the body and that's where we realize that it is a it is a material called proteins a nutrient that we are very commonly aware of but we don't know these properties of proteins it's uh, pretty common that uh, whenever we think about electron transfer or electricity the first thing that strikes to our mind is metals that uh, metals are very good conductors of electricity but often not all metals are very good at storing that energy in them so that is where we thought that uh, let's not look at metals and let's go beyond that into uh, biomimicry as it is normally referred to so that's where we thought why not use these proteins these elements to make the battery pack that can power the electric vehicle so uh, if you look at the entire structure and how we try to build it so you're basically looking at mimicking uh, mimicking processes out of natural human body into a man made product which is uh, pretty much a sustainability concept which is called biomimicry and uh, besides biomimicry uh, th this entire flow chain uh, if you look at the battery it's going to be very similar to a lithium ion battery but in terms of the concept the raw material kind of has a switch where we try to bring in proteins into the entire structure and uh, remove the lithium ions the lithium metal completely which clearly will make it biodegradable now during this entire discussion and research that both of us were having in on parallel space we have had discussions about air pollution concerns and air quality index in the northern part of india and how winters are really difficult to deal with and uh, initially we used to really believe that it is because of the ice in engine vehicles and all the pollution that the vehicles are creating on road but uh, with a few discussions that we had uh, it was quite surprising that it is the crop that the farmers burn which actually leads to this entire problem which is a which is a major concern it is not just the vehicles but it is also like the crop the residue that the farmers burn in plenty because there is no solution to what has to be done to that waste so at that point of time we were trying to consider that uh, if we could have that crop used somewhere in making this battery and if we could actually merge these two ideas and that would probably be the best marriage possible and in that process of analyzing and understanding how we could bring them together and make it as uh, one whole product we considered uh, different uh, systems different uh, products different you know synthesize uh, possibilities of the raw material that we are hunting for and because the raw material for us was actually proteins and uh, kind we kind of realized that the northern plains has plenty of crops which are protein rich so it could possibly create uh, a a match where we can actually uh, bring bring that crop residue procure it and try and use it to extract the material that we need so that's that was just a concept a very uh, preliminary concept at that point and we just want to do some trials to find out whether this actually holds good for the entire theory that we trying to establish here and uh, if i go on the conceptual side as to what it exactly come where it exactly comes from it's a sustainability concept again called industrial ecology where the raw material the waste material of one industry is used to be the raw material of another and in that condition uh, because it is a purely circular uh, full closed economy you don't have any waste and that's what we try to inculcate and flow through to build this entire product now during this entire research that we were trying to do we also discovered certain more interesting elements which was not the primary concern uh, initially but uh, we did discover that protein as an element is is a very quick the charging element 
so it uh, the battery is made out of these proteins really can charge very fast in, as compared to lithium ion batteries or lead acid batteries for the matter of fact and uh, apart from this uh, because it's like a natural element it is completely biodegradable so these batteries can be recycled can be put into the soil to degrade completely once their life cycle is complete and uh, over these benefits of being completely uh, biodegradable and uh, back into the soil from the soil uh, the major problem that we are also solving is you know if you are able to procure that top residue which is actually burnt so we are, we are majorly answering to that concern where a lot of pollution decreases the air quality index of the northern India or northern plains to a huge extent and if that top residue is procured and utilized here the air quality index will definitely get better and besides this on the electric vehicle front because these batteries uh, have the natural element called proteins and because they have a uh, property to quickly charge so like Nikita mentioned, it would uh, clearly give you a better charging, if not uh, a very ultra fast range, but does give you a better charging. And at the same time, it also will give you a better range because of the sticky nature of the proteins. They give a very promising range output and it seems to be more efficient, more effective than uh, any other battery available in the market. But apart from all of these, uh, something that we really emphasized on and we believed is that it is completely made in India because you can procure these uh, crop residue material from the from any land, any part of India and you could use it abundantly into making these batteries and this would also subsequently reduce the cost of the battery it would in turn reduce the cost of the electric vehicle because your main component gets cheaper as it is being made in India, it is procured in India and it is built completely here and it is built for the global market with industrial standards right, So we had our entire setup ready so we had the uh, base with the raw material in hand we had the concept in hand and then that's where we just started off to build this battery to find out whether it actually holds good and whether uh, in initial testing it, it, it could be feasible enough to take it forward at a commercial scale because sometimes uh, concepts could be very enriching but to look at uh, the perspective of being scalable and being uh, being in the market in terms of a commercial mass produced product there is a gap that has to be filled so that's where we started off with our initial proof of concepts setting up the uh, entire uh, the structure in a lab based environment to set up the cells and then eventually move to the batteries. So we set up our initial crude form prototypes which is just those elements put together which is the anode cathode electrolyte a separator in between which are very basic elements of a typical battery cell and bringing those battery cells together we first tested two cells to see the authenticity they, they came out promising they worked they did give us a very good results and we eventually moved forward to build about 200 plus cells together in a 48 volt battery pack which was uh, supposed to be then tested in a vehicle to understand whether our trajectory is on the right path. So here we were after about one, one and a half years of research and hard work and development of this entire product. We finally had something which was at par if not better than lithium ion batteries and uh, we could actually use it in a proper electric vehicle to power the electric vehicle. So these batteries showed a faster charging time. It would take, if a lithium ion battery was about say four to five hours on home charging, these batteries could do that in one hour time. And apart from this, uh, in a two wheeler uh, lithium ion battery back, it takes about say 60 to 70 kilometers of range per charge. But if you look at the protein crystal batteries, as we call them, the Nexus batteries, they are capable of going beyond 100 kilometers per charge because they have this property of doing that. So that's uh, all in all about how the entire structure moved and uh, I guess when we started off it was just the two of us crazily uh, having night conversations all, all night on the terrace and then eventually setting up the entire space just collecting stuff and trying to do these experiments and then eventually proceed towards building a smaller team which is very important for us in terms of uh, you know setting up this entire uh, environment of being commercial and say uh, where entrepreneurship comes into place. So we, we tried to build this team, the, eventually people came on board and now we are progressing so we are happy with the way things are moving. More so starting with just two of us to presently being like a 18 member team. So that's really something which for which I would pat our backs on. You know not just the entrepreneurship side, in fact if you talk about the product as well, it is not just actually fastening the adaptability of EVs in India and the globe. It is also uh, hugely helping the growth of agriculture industry. Because it is completely biodegradable and uh, recyclable as not at no extra cost, it would really be helpful in reducing a lot of carbon from the environment in probably the next century. So these elements are actually making it one perfect solution. And uh, once in the market, the, the numbers that the government projects 
for say the year 2030 could probably be achieved by 2026 or 2027. You know, not only that, uh, I would say that if you come down to the other side of the picture where we are procuring the crop residue, so we are in turn also benefiting a farmer by giving him an additional income uh, of, of a couple of thousands, which I'm sure uh, it's something over his average income that he has. So it's definitely benefiting him. So, it, so I'm not committing, I'm not like putting up numbers here to be exact because we yet to go on the mass production side. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, in this entire journey of ours that we've spent in making this product, what we've realized, both of us, is uh, you know, entrepreneurship is not just about having the right team or having the breakthrough idea or having a lot of funds to support your operations and your ideas. It's a lot more about uh, the emotional strength that the founders have. There are plenty of highs and lows. Uh, there is prop actually no linear graph. You go down very low, you also have too many highs. But the essence of, an, of a successful entrepreneur is only when you are stable in all of these situations. So you don't have to be too excited when you are at your highs and don't have to be too depressed when you are at your lows. So if you have a linear stable graph there, that you are always stable and emotionally you have that strength to deal with all of this, it is really, really going to take you very far. Just, just maybe adding on there, uh, here we are with uh, our, all the emotional strength that we can have and uh, just to uh, keep holding on to that emotional strength and to understand your progress, I am sure it's very important that we maintain records of what we do. So for at Nexus, we made sure from the very beginning we have all paperwork, all documents, all structures, everything doc written down, documented. So what happens is if today we fall somewhere, we can definitely go back and check what was at point A so that at point C we can recheck and recorrect and get back to the same track. So it's very important besides having the emotional strength that we document all our papers, have our financials clear, have all the paperwork in place. So if, if there's anybody who's even questioning you onto what you're doing, you have a backing to show them and it's not in the air and that's really important. But all said and done, in the end you might be as prepared as you want to be but there will always be a few challenges. But honestly, that should not stop anybody from trying and experimenting with their ideas. We honestly believe that uh, a ship in the harbour is safe, but that is not where it is meant to be. Thank you. Thank you.